Right now we at the crib. <laughs> we at the old crib. New Orleans, Louisiana, 70126, you feel me? This is where all my childhood stories come from. Like every song I've ever written was probably something that took place on this block. My daddy put these poles here. It was a Saturday night and my daddy used to let me sleep downstairs to watch cable late. I was sleeping on the sofa and he said that night when he got up to go to bed, something told him to wake me up and say, Doc, go sleep in your room upstairs tonight. A few hours later, drunk driver come driving clean through that where I was sleeping there. This where the sofa was like right here. Man, this stuff was crazy. You used to sleep here. So when the car came in, dog, the car came clean through all this, you heard me? They have been here all these years and they, they withstood Hurricane Katrina. Nothing will ever move these. So whenever I pass in my old neighborhood and I see these, I think about that story. Crazy, and I'm, I, I feel like I'm here for a reason though. Cause I, I was supposed to die that night. Like, it's not sketchy details when I rap about stuff. You know, I live by my motto, which is threes up. It stands for be real, be righteous, and be relevant. That's how I'm rocking, that's what I'm representing. This really where my heart was at, was on the basketball court. So one of the days when I knew I wasn't supposed to be over here by myself playing, I came over here and I saw two dudes get into it. So they come out here on the court, they still arguing. Meanwhile, a dude got a gun. And I guess the other dude called his bluff. You know, he didn't think he'd shoot him. And I seen a dude get shot, you know what I mean? And I just kind of started looking at things differently after that, you know? And that happened right here. Right now, we're at Rodney's Snowball Stand. This was my first legal job. When I was in ninth grade, I decided I wanted to have a stable, legit job. So I came over here and I was like 14 years old. I couldn't pass training until I made 48 bowls of nachos in like three minutes. And it was just so impossible. I couldn't, I couldn't make nachos fast enough. So payday, got my hand out. I'm like, I'm ready to get that money. They gave me $37 and 25 cents. I quit. <laughs> I quit. I only worked here for two weeks. <laughs> they used to give you um, a gummy bear on top. They ain't giving no gummy bear though. I don't know how to feel about that. Damn. Right now we are with two of my absolute favorite people on this earth. I can't even say the name without smiling. And this is Mama and Papa. That's what I call them. I keep this ready. I'm so proud of this. Yeah. When you was in Hawaii and you wrote this card to us. Mama and Papa sitting in Hawaii reflecting on my life. Thank you all for helping shape me into the man I am. Love, Doc. And I keep that right there. I'm so proud of my card. So this, this is me and my grandpa. I got this frame, says the teacher and the apprentice. I made him put his hat on backwards so he could be like me. And uh, yeah, that, that mean a lot to me. I know what true love was like being around my grandparents. I could see it with how they loved each other. I could feel it with how they loved me. I never felt poor. I never felt broke. I never felt unloved. And it's because my mother, my father, my grandma, and my grandpa, they literally just held me up and lifted me so high that I always felt like a king. I think about my friends who lived on that same block. They didn't end up like I did, you know? I think it's the family structure that played a big role in how I turned out. Welcome to my neighborhood, New Brunswick, New Jersey. We're standing right here on Riverside Drive, and I'm going to take you all on a tour through my neighborhood. <laughs> 